Welcome back. Not so long ago, I teared down an ISDN NTBA, so a network terminator for ISDN basic rate access. A card here, link in the description. Now I have here on the bench a DSL modem. Not a router, a modem. That is, you were able to connect a single PC to that thing or you could connect a second box, a router to connect your home, whole, uh, home network to that DSL modem. And it is a German telecom Speedport 201, which delivered you a whopping 16 megabit of speed uh, downstream only, of course. Upstream was limited to a single megabit per second. And now let's take that thing apart. Enjoy! But before I take the hammer to that thing, a uh, quick look at the outside features. We already saw in the intro the, uh, yeah, the type label. So you have three LEDs, power LAN, which is not really your LAN, but just a modem connection using a TCP IP cable and DSL. So that's it. And on the back side, you have your telephone DSL connection, which you can also feed in through two wire clamp here. And then that's your LAN connection, which goes not to your LAN switch, but either directly to a single PC or a router. A plug here for external uh, power supply and an on off switch. And now, Let's open that thing up. I do hope that they hide some four screws under these rubber feet here. Uh, yeah, there's a screw. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I was second screw and come on, third screw and probably fourth screw. I was a little bit concerned that you need to uh, uh, force that thing open, but obviously the screws are reasonably well accessible. Uh, let me get the right screwdriver. Okay, I expect them to be self-tapping screws. Anything else would be a real surprise. They don't feel like self-tapping and they won't. Yeah, they come out. Yeah, definitely self-tapping. And that should be it. Now that thing should just come apart. Yeah, yeah. That was easy. Uh, nothing special here in the case, which is made from uh, can you read that? ABS, not flame retardant or something. Uh, the four light pipes here for the LEDs and now we can dive down. I suspect that the whole main board here, <coughs> yeah, the board, main board is a little bit too much, just lifts out here. Yeah, it does. Nice. Now let's zoom down. And there's absolutely nothing here uh, in the lower part of the case. It's also made from ABS, so yeah, ABS. So your telephone, uh, your DSL carrying telephone line comes in here, and then we have we will have a look at the chips and transformers in detail in a second. Then comes a typical uh, transformer here to connect to a telephone line to give you galvanic isolation. And there's a lot of protection stuff here on the input. I guess that's a gas discharge tube uh, to yeah discharge any over voltage coming in here. 
And I normally would suspect these are morphs, but they are marked as C's, so capacitors. I'm a little bit unsure. I have absolutely no idea what that thing does, but the uh, symmetric signal here out of the transformer goes through this resistor capacitor group and then you can see it basically here i will zoom down in a second goes into this very symmetric group and then goes into the big chip which is i guess a broadcom dsl modem and here we also have some uh, inductors and uh, capacitors and resistors and from the modem, I guess it goes here into, I can't read it right now, but uh, I that's an Ethernet driver, must be, uh, Ethernet transformer, and then it goes out here. Uh, power supply section, um, astonishingly, astonishing uh, complex, okay? So there are here in the power supply section one, two, three, four, maybe five chips. And this is easily explained if you look around on the main board. By the way, that thing has a MAC address, which is obviously somewhere in an EEPROM or something. Uh, where was I? Yeah, uh, we have here a test point for 1.2 volts, a test point for 3.3 volts, a test point for 2.5 volts, and a test point for 5 volts. So you have four power rails on that thing. Is there another? Yeah, it's another 1.5 volt test point. Oh, so 1.5, 1.2, 3.3, 2.5, and 5 volts. So five power rails are made here in the power supply section from, I guess, a 12 volt input. No surprises here on the back side, just some diode resistors and capacitors. But please note these large isolation areas here. That one for the telephone line input, which can also always carry if there's a thunderstorm or something. Very high voltages. So there's that gas discharge tube on the back side to uh, discharge those over voltages. And here the isolation area for the Ethernet output. Let's go over the chips now. And I try because I will have to turn the board quite a bit to read the uh, type numbers. Uh, I will try to keep it as less disorienting as possible. So let's start here with that transformer. You can already read it here. And that little chippy. And we'll turn the board that way. That's easy enough to read. It's a pulse BX2916LNL. And indeed, it is an ADSL transformer providing galvanic isolation from the telephone line. That little critter here is a Broadcom 6301KSG. And that's an ADSL2 plus line driver driving the input side of the transformer. Now I'm turning the board again and we will read out the type numbers of these three parts, starting with the big thing, which I think is the main processor, the ADSL modem. And indeed, it's a Broadcom BCM 6338KFBG. And that is indeed an ADSL2 plus bridge slash router. So they could have programmed the whole thing as a router. And it has an integrated 
a 10 100 megabit Ethernet port and USB 1.1 port. Uh, it contains, by the way, a MIPS 32 processor. And that quartz here is, if I read it right, 64 megahertz. And that thing always works in conjunction with that Broadcom ADSL2 Plus line driver we already saw. If that Broadcom chip already contains the Ethernet transceiver, then this, the ISSI IC42S16100F-7TL, can't be another Ethernet driver. Instead, it's a 1 mega times 16 parallel SD RAM used by the MIPS processor in the Broadcom chip. And that thing beside it is indeed an Ethernet transformer. And that logo means both hands, a Taiwanese company, TS21CHF. So again, ah, Ethernet transformer. Let's turn just 90 degrees now and have a look at these three parts. I first assumed that this is also something to do with the power supply, but in fact it's a PCT25VF040B and that's just a 4 megabit serial flash. Okay, so that belongs also to our central Broadcom chip. And these two are some uh, Rome 2SB1188G PNP medium power transistors. Yeah, I'll talk about them later a little bit more. Staying in the same orientation, just moving up here a little, <laughs> we find a seven, an NXP 74 LVC 14 AD. That's a hex inverting Schmidt trigger, and that's clearly part of the power supply somehow. Moving to the side of the board a little bit further, we have that little thingy here, it's a little bit hard to read, but that's a diode incorporated AP34033. Uh, sorry, 63. And that thingy is a universal DC uh, DC converter. That is, it contains everything a, refer a voltage reference, comparator, oscillator, everything you need to build a step up, step down converter, inverting uh, converter, whatever you like. And we have actually three of them on the board. If I go a little bit in that direction, uh, yeah. Here is the second one and here that was <clears throat> a little bit buried under the goo is the third one. So we just had a look at the uh, hex inverter Schmidt trigger here and the uh, three DC-DC converter controllers. Uh, yeah, power transistor also integrated in these three thingies. And I don't know, uh, did I mention the flash here? Yeah, we also had a look at the flash. Uh, but now <clears throat> there is a little oddity here. We already counted five test points for five different power rails on that thing, but we only have three DC-DC switch mode converters here, uh, the chips and the three inductors here. So how do we get, that makes three <clears throat> power rails. So how do we get the other two power rails? And I guess that's done in a fashion of a linear regulator using these PNP transistors here. So for example, we're making here, uh, it's a little bit small, let me zoom in a little bit, uh, 1.5 volts and we can regulate that down to the 1.2 volts we need here. We also uh, make somewhere 3.3 uh, volts and that you can with reasonably uh, a reasonable <clears throat> uh, 
uh, power losses convert uh, with the second one to the, where is it? Uh, yeah, 2.5 volts you need down below here. Yeah, and that's it for the chips. By the way, the electrolytic capacitors are TIPO, CAP XON, and LUXON. And that's it for today. An enclosure made of two parts held together by four screws, four rubber feet and a single board. Very simple, very efficient construction. But it doesn't look cheap. The board looks very nice and most of the parts are not Chinese. It all looks good and even after all that time, I mean that thing is probably also 10-15 years old, all the electrolytics still look good and, and that's it also for today. So till next time, bye.